In the last video, we covered some of the most common wireline logging instruments, how they function in the field, and what properties they are used to determine. Now we will go over basic well log interpretation as well as some of their larger applications. Gamma ray logs measure the total gamma rays in API or GAPI units. These are standard units defined by the American Petroleum Institute. Generally, high readings of GAPI indicate shales and low readings indicate formations like sandstone, limestone, and dolomite. In addition, more detailed spectral logs show the concentrations of thorium and uranium displayed in parts per million, while potassium is displayed in percentages. The ratios of the elements on spectral logs indicate depositional environments and other characteristics of the formation. Examples include thorium to uranium, where high levels are found in continental oxidizing depositional environments, while low levels are found in marine reducing environments. The other ratio analyzed is thorium to potassium, which is useful in categorizing clay types, ranging from high thorium kaolinite to high potassium glauconite. These ratios can be skewed by high concentrations of potassium feldspars, micas, glauconite, and uranium-rich water. Radioactive minerals in the formation can raise the gamma reading, making formations appear as shale. Overall, these readings have little response to reservoir fluids, which makes this method the most effective at identifying lithology. Spontaneous potential logs report the electric potential within the borehole in millivolts. To function properly, a shale baseline must be set to reflect the typical response for impermeable shale within the formation. Once established, all measurements are relative to the baseline. SP logs respond similar to gamma ray logs, although freshwater environments contribute to a positive result and high salinity water pushes towards negative. Therefore, combining the two readings is very useful for identifying the salinity of the formation fluid. Like gamma ray logs, the contact points between stratigraphic units are identified by the curve inflection points on the log. Measurements are dependent on the salinity difference between the drilling fluid and formation fluid. This difference can lead to misinterpretation of calibrated for incorrectly. Neutron porosity logs record the neutron response from hydrogen atom collision within the formation in counts per second. With environmental calibration and correction, modern logs can be translated directly to percent fluid filled porosity. Readings can be affected by gas in the formation and its shale content. Gas displays lower porosity and shale shows a higher porosity than the true value. Clay can also cause unreliable readings due to pockets of water that do not account for secondary porosity. When used in combination with the formation density logs, these areas can be identified with more certainty. Density logs monitor the gamma rays able to pass through the formation and counts per second. This is a method of measuring electron density which correlates strongly to bulk density of the formation. Modern equipment is able to convert this measurement directly to grams per cubic centimeter. It also calibrates and corrects for environmental conditions similar to neutron porosity logs that will be discussed later in the video. In essence, high gamma ray counts indicate a low density formation while a low count equates to a higher density. Porosity can be inferred inversely from the bulk density when the matrix is well known. This has similar accuracy issues as porosity logs when the formation contains clay due to its high variability in density. This instrument is used in combination with porosity tools to provide additional information about the true porosity and density of the formation. Some examples of this include if the matrix was incorrectly calibrated, if gas is suspected, or if the formation contains shale or clay. Sonic logs record the time it takes for sonic waves to travel through the formation in units of microseconds per feet, with most ranging from 40 to 140 microseconds per feet. The interval travel times correspond to the set matrix to measure porosity. Estimations of average transit times for an uncompacted formation are listed in the table shown. For standard formations, the transit time increases with increased intergranular porosity, but this does not reflect secondary porosity. In unconsolidated sediments, this instrument requires compaction correction to give true porosity values. Readings can also be affected by gas within the formation, which causes increased travel times. Resistivity log readings measure shallow, medium, and deep resistivity levels in ohm meters of the area around the borehole. Relative resistivity values correspond to the table shown. Resistivity depth levels are defined by the ratio of drilling fluid to formation fluid saturation. The diameter of these levels can offer qualitative insight into layer permeability. 
In addition, Archie's equation can be used to calculate fluid saturation and porosity directly from the resistivity measurements. Changes in resistivity can also be used to identify hydrocarbons, dissolved solid concentrations, and subsurface contaminants. These can be used in combination with gamma ray logs to differentiate the response between the lithology and formation water salinity. Borehole imaging techniques are used to analyze cores that may not be oriented or have sections missing, allowing for much more accurate data analysis, especially in cores that have rock that was lost during core recovery. Most often, acoustic and optical imaging logs are used side by side as some features may be harder to identify in acoustic imaging logs. Optical imaging produces a high-resolution, continuous 360-degree colored photographic image of the borehole. In acoustic imaging, transit time and amplitude of the reflected signal are used to produce basic photographic-like images. Irregularities in the formation can cause scattering, creating a weaker detected signal, identified by a darker color. Transit time data from these logs can also produce high-resolution caliber logs. The images produced by these instruments can be used to visually identify fractures, fossils, bedding planes, cross-lamination, and strike and dip by means of manual methods or using computer programs to aid in interpretation. Due to modern advancements in camera technology, this high-resolution data can be faster, more cost-efficient, and more accurate at identifying lithology and formation fluid characteristics than standard wireline logging instruments. For nuclear magnetic resonance logs, the signal is measured from the spin of the excited protons of hydrogen atoms within the formation. The amplitude of the magnetic signal received is proportional to the number of hydrogen protons, indicating fluid filled porosity. When looking at the log, high amplitudes appear red and low appear blue. The span from left to right across the logs indicates the signal decay as the protons return to their initial state. Larger pores take longer to decay, while areas with small pores appear mostly blue. Early response and quick decay can indicate high clay content in the presence of bound water, while a delayed high signal with slow decay is a good indicator for aquifers. With the help of computer analysis, these factors can determine both porosity and pore size distribution. Further analysis can use the ratios of different sized pores to estimate permeability. High number of large pores suggest high permeability. These measurements from NMR tools can further be used to make inferences about formation size, shape, composition, and fluid characteristics. A caliper logging instrument takes resistance measurements from the borehole walls as the caliper's arms are moved along them and translates them directly into diameter measurements. Units are typically in inches, and these instruments are useful for sensing cave-ins or voids within the formation. The measurements from this tool are overlaid with other instruments in the wireline logging suite for depth correlation. All of these instruments require a high level of consideration for environmental conditions that can affect the readings. Typical causes for error must be considered so the proper calibrations and corrections can be made. It's important to remember that most of these tools are meant to be used in conjunction to obtain a complete view of the formation. All these instruments have faults, and failure to identify them can lead to misinterpretation of the data. Therefore, the true interpretation of these logs requires a team of geophysicists with deep understanding of how these formation characteristics are interconnected. To be effective, these experts need significant background information and in advanced modeling techniques to process the data and correctly account for numerous environmental factors that can skew the results. It should also be noted that growing knowledge of the mathematical relationships that connect these properties has led to innovative developments in the use of these instruments. This means measurements can be used in ways beyond their intended use to identify subsurface characteristics. Real-world applications for wireline logging in the water well industry and beyond are growing every day. As the technologies continue to develop, wireline logging serves as an unmatched toolset in the water well industry. Thank you for watching our video series. Please like and rock that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video.